Hello and welcome everyone. So here we are taking a case of a needle biopsy specimen from prostate. So here we can see the prostatic tissue it is made up of glands and stroma. So let's zoom in to see the architecture and histology of these glands. So these are the prostatic glands, normal prostatic glands and the peculiarity about these normal glands is that these glands are lined by a double layered epithelium so you can see here that this is a gland and this is outer basement membrane and then the inner columnar layer is there and then there is a outer basal layer <coughs> so in basal layer it is made up of cuboidal to flattened cells and this double layered epithelium is the uh, characteristic feature of a benign prostatic glands again here you see this is the inner layer the nuclei of the inner layer and these are the basal cell layer nuclei so these are the benign prostatic glands sometimes these glands they contain prostatic secretion which, which are inspissated and they are known as corpora amylacea again you can see there is another focus these are the glands benign glands as they have double layered epithelium and then inside this there is these are these inspissated secretions with uh, lamellated appearance these are this is corpora amylacea again these dilated glands sometimes these benign glands they also have these uh, papillary infoldings here you can see there is a papillary infolding and inside this secretory layer the inner layer is secretory layer and it uh, causes these secretions in the lumen of the gland so this is these are the benign glands now let us look at the pathology so in between these benign glands we can see there are some infiltrating glands these small glands which are little bit crowded so these crowded glands which are small in size and somewhere they, are, they seem to be arranged back to back but still we can appreciate some stroma between these glands so let's zoom in to these glands to understand their histology so see these glands now as uh, we can contrast it with the appearance of the normal benign prostatic glands here these glands are small smaller in size then the important thing is that they are lined by a single layered epithelium here you can see that the outer layer is lost that basal layer is lost so this is the characteristic feature of a malignant gland of prostate so it does not have a outer basal layer again you see these glands at higher power we shall see it so this is a gland and this is a lining of a single layered epithelium this is the stroma and it is divided that is separated from this normal benign gland let's see at other glands so here again this is a gland it is lined by a single layered epithelium so these uh, the nuclei of these glands these are showing hyperchromatism they are pleomorphic they are showing mild to moderate pleomorphism and at some points you can see that there is a prominent nuclei like at this in this cell you can note again here there is a prominent nuclei so these are the malignant prostatic glands seen in a case of prostatic adenocarcinoma so the important points are the glands they are small in size having round to oval lumen they are lined by a single layer of uh, epithelium epithelial cells tumor cells and then they have nuclear atypia and at places you can notice the prominent nucleoli in the in these cells like here you can see there is the prominent nucleoli inside the nucleus so this is a case of prostatic adenocarcinoma now next important thing that we do which is the next step after identifying the prostatic adenocarcinoma is to understand what is the pattern of these glands <clears throat> to do the gleason scoring and grading so uh, in the gleason there are five patterns in the uh, grade one, in this when we give the pattern one or two then the tumor is well circumscribed and it consists of discrete regular glands and in the gray in the pattern three like in this there are discrete glands 
and they have got some intervening stroma so let, let's have a look at some other bit now see this these are the glands these are the crowded glands lined by a single layered epithelium and this is the intervening stroma between them so if these glands were fused with no intervening stroma we would have, we would have given a pattern of four but here the stroma is there so we give gleason pattern three in the needle biopsy specimen for the gleason scoring we follow the rule that we will score the most common pattern followed by the worst pattern so in this uh, needle biopsy specimen we can see that there are only there is only a single pattern that is three the glands they are small discrete crowded and the glands they are separated by some stroma and these glands are infiltrating so we give it a score of three so this is the most common pattern and this is the only pattern which is noted in these biopsy specimen so we give a gleason score of three plus three whereas in a case of radical prostatectomy specimen we give the score based on the most common pattern and followed by the second most common pattern which should be minimum 5% of the tumor tissue and if there is a third pattern which is less than 5% we give at the, as a, it, we mention it in the report as a minor pattern so there is a difference of uh, the gleason scoring in between the needle biopsy specimen and a radical prostatectomy specimen and lastly but we should know we should know about the immunohistochemical markers which are useful in the diagnosis of prostatic carcinoma so for prostatic carcinoma i told you that uh, in a malignant gland the basal cell layer is lost so if we apply the basal cell layer markers in some ambiguous cases we will be able to differentiate it from a benign gland so what are those markers those markers are p63 high molecular weight cytokeratin ck56 so on applying these markers p63 is most commonly employed so if that is lost then we uh, we can label that gland as a malignant prostatic gland and the case as a adenocarcinoma prostate then also there is another marker that is amacr a m a c r amacr will mark will stain the prostatic tumor cells that will be positive in this in this layer another thing if if there is a case of metastatic metastatic prostatic carcinoma then to determine the primary to confirm the primary as prostate we can use the marker prostate specific antigen uh, to uh, to confirm that it is a prostatic origin another marker new marker is nkx3-1 so that can also be used for in case of metastasis of unknown primary where we are suspecting a prostate primary and in addition the serum markers that are used for the prostatic adenocarcinoma is prostate specific antigen so that can also be correlated in a case so that was all about the this case of prostatic adenocarcinoma hope it helped thank you very much